I've got the initial cleanup here uh, done on the uh, brake calipers and let's go ahead and start the rebuild process. I was gonna uh, wire wheel these and get all the rust completely off, uh, but I decided to stop and see what the condition of the internal pistons and all that kind of stuff was before we went that far. So I wanna pop those pistons out first. We're gonna use air pressure for that. All right, so I, uh, I really don't like touching brake fluid. I, clearly I've done it in the past many times, but it has a propensity to soak into your skin and take, all, take along with it all of the things that make up brake fluid and they go into your body and I'm not a huge fan of that. Let's move on. I've got some safety glasses here on, by the way, so, so protect your eyes. And I may need some kind of a rubber around that. Let's, let me get a rag. That's gonna be a mess. That's gonna be a mess. All right, I went ahead and uh, put on my, uh, my respirator as well because uh, aerated, vaporized brake fluid floating around in the air is not something you wanna breathe. <laughs> Woo! If you're not blowing stuff up, you ain't doing nothing. You can take that to the bank. That's a good time right there, let me tell you what. Let's uh, just wipe these pistons off here and just see what we're dealing with. Initial indications look good. I do see some extremely minor rust, but no pitting. Now, there's rust on the end out here, but the business end that does the, you know, the pressure stuff, that's, that's fine. This outward end, I can uh, take the uh, abrasive disc on the die grinder and clean that up. That'll be just fine. Brakes on this old Cadillac, they just weren't, I don't know, they just weren't doing all that well. Can't explain it. They just weren't, they weren't good. Well, they were good, but not as good as they should be. Man, how does this come out of here? I have no idea. All right, I'm going to cut this rubber and just sort of get it out of my way so I can see what I'm dealing with here. If you can't see what you're dealing with, you know, what are you doing? You know what I'm saying? How many brake calipers have you ever rebuilt on an old Cadillac? None, this is the first. Yep, so that metal ring is basically, there's a little lip there. I wonder if I can grab it with this seal removal tool. Hey, look at that. Ingenuity is always the best way. If you can't use ingenuity, just hit it with a hammer. All right, cool. All right, trash can for you. What do we got down in here? Ooh, some goodies. We got some goodies. Just a little bit of corrosion and some, probably the reason why my brakes weren't working all that well. <laughs> Oh, that's hilarious. Okay, here's the deal. This is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take these out and I'm gonna hit them with brake clean and then I'm gonna wire wheel them. Now, none of that is exceptionally exciting, so we'll just do that off camera and we'll be back before you know it. All right, uh, you know, I think uh, you all knew it was gonna come to this eventually, right? So let's get a little more aggressive down in the uh, brake caliper cylinders and see if we can't clean this thing up properly. Ooh, that's fancy. Let's wipe that out, see what it looks like. I think we can do a little better. I'm gonna tighten up those, uh, I'm gonna expand this thing out a little bit. I think that's as good as it's gonna get, folks. And I think good as it's going to get is going to be good enough, actually. It, uh, it's not rocket science. It's just a brake caliper. It's got a little bit of pitting down in here in the lower bits, you know. But, you know, it's the rubber seal that counts, right? So I just don't, I just don't think it's going to matter all that much. If the brakes don't work, I'll replace them. How about that? All right, I'm going to put the other caliper in the vise and do the same thing to that one. And then I'll do a one final uh, brake clean uh, cleanup, and then we'll paint them with uh, black caliper paint.
paint. All right, the uh, calipers are drying off. And I'm going to use a little bit of uh, 1500. See what we can do here. Looking pretty good. Now this big part down here is not where all the pressure is going to be, so I'm going to use a, uh, an abrasive disc on the die grinder to get that off. And this stuff on the bottom doesn't really matter, but you know what? It's my brake caliper piston and I want it to be pretty. So there. That's good enough for government work. All right, let me get a uh, abrasive disc after that other part right there. Yeah, let's see what we can't do about that down inside there. It's actually not important, but. Ah, that's good enough for government work. All right, I'm gonna clean the other piston up off camera and uh, we'll be right back. All right, we're gonna go ahead and uh, finish these brake calipers up here. Got a light coat of uh, black caliper paint on there. I uh, left the insides bare, not really worried about it. And uh, got a little brake fluid there. Let's go ahead and coat up the inside there, you know, just kind of keep that from corroding any further. And uh, got the O-ring here. Let's go ahead and get that installed. That's uh, really simple. It just goes in that channel inside there. Not a huge deal. Okay. Oh boy, that was hard. All right, we're gonna get the uh, piston installed next and the uh, dust boot around that. So, put a little fluid on that guy. Then we're gonna get this uh, inner lip of the uh, boot in down in that groove right there in the piston. Hopefully that'll be uh, like falling off a log. All right, there we go. Now we're gonna bring that up there like, yeah, okay. I'm getting the hang of it. You just guys, you just hold your horses here. So you slip it down in there to the edge of that thing is in the groove, right? And then you're just gonna ease it up, ease it up like that, you see? And that's what that'll look like right there, right? And a little more brake fluid in there to be one with the world. What does that even mean? I don't know. And what you do is you make this work without screwing it up. That's what that's how you do it in general. Yeah, my boot slipped on me. All right. Now what you need is a little bit of uh, mechanical assistance. All right, hopefully our O-ring stayed in place. We're gonna find out later, I suppose. All right, our old uh, friend is back. This is from a, a wheel bearing kit that I've had for quite some time now. And let's see, look at that. Let's see what we can do with this. Sometimes you gotta be more clever than the most averagest bear. We are done with this brake caliper. One second, no we're not. Now we're done. All right, we've got the uh, tie rod in here or tie strut rod, whatever you wanna call it. Uh, this is your caster adjustment, so you loosen or tighten this nut to move this thing this way or that way. It'll take your lower control arm, move it this way or that way. And this whole angle like this is your caster adjustment. So um, the, um, this cone-shaped piece of rubber goes up into that recess right there. And I've got the caster adjustment nut as far back as it'll go. 
and it still doesn't meet up with the holes. So what do you do? Okay, keep in mind that the rubber on the other, on the old uh, strut rod was really compressed. This is brand new rubber. So I'm going to put a uh, punch up through the middle hole uh, where the uh, sway bar uh, end link kit bolts to this. And I will simply ease that up through, up, up, up through the uh, strut rod at an angle, pull that back like that. Now you can get your bolts in and get them started. So, you know, not rocket science, but, you know, it's something you have to be aware of. So, all right, so I'm going to tighten up these two nuts here to 55 foot pounds. Uh, and then I'm going to adjust the caster back to where it was uh, just simply by counting the number of threads on the uh, strut rod here. So it's about 15 threads that should be visible here. That'll get me in the ballpark so I can take it to the alignment shop. All right, got both strut rods in there. Let's go ahead and get our uh, sway bar or anti-sway bar or whatever you want to call this thing. I can't recall which way this thing came out of here, actually. Probably like that. Well, let's go with that for now. Well, it definitely went under the oil filter. You know what would be funny would be if uh, I needed to take one of these strut rods back off in order to get this in there. That would be hilarious. But I would not put it past me to do something like that. Let's see here. That needs to go over that hose. Numb nuts. Holy cow, I think we did it. So I got these, uh, yep, up in there. Up in there is where it goes. There we go. Around the fuel line. Up, up, and away. All right, let's see. Uh, uh, let's see. I think it's in upside down. I can't remember. The deciding factor is the hump in the middle. All right, we got that uh, sway bar in there uh, properly orientated. Is that a word? I don't know. So we're going to position our uh, end links here. Got your long bolt, slip that through there, and then it's uh, washer, rubber, rubber, washer, spacer, washer, rubber. Got it? Good. All right, did the other side. The rubber is a pretty tight fit, so it holds all that mess together. Now we can lift this up like this and set this in through the hole, the uh, hole in the uh, tie rod, strut rod, whatever you want to call it, hopefully. All right, we got that in place. Let's put, uh, oh man, you know what I forgot to do? Telling myself the other day I needed to paint these. These are the uh, sway bar bushing uh, hold down brackets. Let me go put a coat of paint on them before we put them back on the car. I'll be right back. All right, into everyone's life, a little gold bling is in order once in a while. All right, take two or three, or 18, or something. By golly, we got it in there right this time. I put this thing in ass backwards there for, uh, first time, which, you know, that's par for the course, really. So there's a, there's a dip in this thing, right? And the dip in the bar, it, it needs to come this way, not that way, right? It goes around the engine. So, all right. <laughs> He's such a hack. Why do I watch this crap? I have no idea. It's your money. So that'll stay like that. Let me do the other side. All right. Now we can put it in there. Now we can put our sway bar bushings on. I put a little lithium grease on them just so there's no squeaks, you know. Now let's pivot this guy up into place. Make sure that goes in that hole there. That goes in that hole there. Now we're gonna add my special bling. I painted the uh, sway bar brackets gold. Why? It's my car. I'll do whatever I want. Just, just making this stuff up, you know. That didn't last long. Oh, gosh. All right, let's get the old uh, Battery. Battery. Powered wrench. That's a five. I need a nine sixteenths. All right, I've uh, minimized the caster adjustment all the way back down this way to pull this lower control arm back towards the front of the car. I'm trying to get this uh, nut to 
onto the bottom of the sway bar end link and all the rubber is brand new and very thick and you know by the time I get the rubber on the washer on I got no threads to put the nut on so I was trying to give myself some room by pulling because I had too much caster in it I guess pulling the lower control arm back that way angling the end link back that way and all the bushings are not lining up um, and also loosen these bolts to pull this downward trying to give myself you know enough room here to line all this stuff up so I can get the bottom nut on the bottom of this end link so that's the battle that I'm facing right now see because the, the rubber is shaped a very specific way it needs to get up in the recess all right let's see what that'll do for us come on Basically, it's all about the one end link on one side. It's all about me. You must do everything I want first. I got one thread. Something to hold that down. All right, that's good. All right, I'm going to try to do the other side off camera. Hopefully, it won't be as big of a faff as you. But uh, anyway, so I'm going to leave these disconnected get the end links on and then i'll put the brackets on the frame clearly that is the requirement so all right i'm going to do the passenger side and then i'll be right back all right i'm going to get you in here and show you what we did over here on the passenger side you know you go to school on something and you get a little smarter so basically this end link has to be at the right angle because this thing the lower control arm is at you know a slight angle the holes in the end of the strut rod have indentations in them into which the rubber must set. So I used some tie wraps, or zip ties, if you will, and uh, hooked this around the steering knuckle, and I drew this this way to get this angle to line up roughly with the angle of the control arm. Uh, and to keep the whole affair tight down, I put some more up here as well to force it down. This one pulls it out, this one pulls it down. And lastly, to get the thread, to get enough threads to start the nut, I put a curl bar on the frame and on top of the bolt like that and press downward. And with all of those techniques in place, I was able to slip this bolt down far enough, pardon the light, I was able to slip that bolt down far enough. So once I take these tie wraps off, uh, <laughs> I'm guessing this will be able to pivot upward and I can reattach my brackets. So I'm gonna do that next. Well, all right, we got our sway bar finally installed. Got our end links tightened down. We got our uh, sway bar bushing brackets tightened down. And I must say, I think the tiny bit of gold bling underneath here just kind of, you know, it's a little silly, but hey, you know what, why not? Plus it matches the uh, color of the, uh, the end link there. And I touched up the head of the bolts a little bit with the gold paint too. So anyway, I just, I just think that's kind of neat. <laughs> All right, enough of that. Let's move on with the rest of the project. Oh, one more thing on these end links here. The service manual says to tighten this nut to the end of the thread on the end of the bolt there. So that's what I've done in that case. You just see the end of the bolt flush there with the nut. So that's good enough. This is a lock nut, so the one of the threads on the end of the nut has a, it's just a little bit compressed and it gives a real firm fit, so that's a locking nut. All right, little cell phone uh, camera action here. So we've got the uh, shock absorbers mounted up there uh, and torqued down into place and mounted up clearly on the uh, upper uh, control arm as well. That's a quickie, not a huge deal. The only thing you have to hold your mouth just right on is uh, lining up the bottom of the shock to get the bolt through there. Consequently, that's the reason why they put a pointed end on the bolt, right? So if you need to shove the bolt back out, you put a center punch on the center of the bolt so you don't mess up the threads. Now we're going to move on to the uh, brakes and so forth. This little rubber O-ring came from right here behind the dust shield. And it was pretty nasty, but there's nothing wrong with it. So I'm going to reuse it. And we're going to take our refurbished uh, dust shield and uh, slip it up in there into place and uh, put three bolts in it. All right, starting to look like something. Got the uh, dust shields on there, cleaned up the spindles, got a fresh uh, coat of uh, new grease on there. 
keep corrosion down. The next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and get the uh, rotors back on the car. Uh, I did a preliminary check of the driver's side rotor. I pulled out the outer bearing and it was fine. And I'm just, I'm just not going to worry about the bearings. I think they're fine. I did the bearings on this thing about five years ago. I'm just not going to worry about it. I'm just going to slap them back on there and not worry about it. All right, so up next, we're going to get the uh, rotors back on and start to hook up our brakes as well. All right, following the service manual, as we normally do, when you reinstall this uh, hub, you're going to tighten your nut to 30 foot-pounds while spinning the disc. And then you're going to back it off, and then you're going to tighten it to 6 foot-pounds. And then you'll back off a touch just so you can get the cotter pin inserted. Now... That's according to the book. Could you just tighten it to 30 and then just hand tighten it? Probably so. And that would work just fine as well. So, all right, let's move on. All right, I took the abrasive disc to the outside of the brake rotor after I uh, put a little brake clean on it and got the grease off and everything. It's pretty nasty yesterday. Got the brake caliper loaded on here. And next up, I'm going to put the brake line on. Got the little bracket back in place. And a while back, I bought some... Uh, brake line at the local parts place. Actually, the, uh, the old school family uh, parts place. And they had what I needed in stock, SAE stuff. And I bent up a new line here that goes from this bracket here back to the proportioning valve back there. So i uh, put the flex line from the caliper to here. And then I'll put this new line from here to the uh, valve back there. I'm gonna do that next. All right, we got the brakes all done on the driver's side. Don't forget to put the flex line onto the brake caliper first before you fasten it to the clip up here. Uh, once you do tighten it down to the brake caliper, you're going to uh, insert it through the hole and get it to seat properly. And then there's a spring-loaded clip that's on the back side. It goes into a slot on the brake uh, line, and that holds that nice and tight in place. And then you can tighten up the flare nut on the hard line behind there. So we got a new hard line back there. The old one was just trashed. It was just too rusty, so I decided not to use it. All right, we're all done with the uh, driver's side uh, brake assembly. I'm going to go ahead and uh, do the passenger side, and then we'll move on. All right, and a preliminary check that I like to do on the, uh, on the brakes is uh, just a quick check to make sure they stop properly in the case of an emergency. So what you want to do is spin the uh, rotor like this, and then put your finger on the brake pad. There you go. Test complete. All right, moment of truth. Got this uh, driver's side all buttoned up. And we got the passenger side all buttoned up. Clearly uh, minus the uh, decorative inner dust covers, however. The next thing we're going to do is get the car on the ground with the wheels on and we're going to tighten up these upper control arm nuts to 75 foot-pounds and we're going to tighten the pivot bolt on the lower control arm to 95 foot pounds. I can't really film any of that because I'll be underneath the car and it'll be just a big old mess. The car will be on the ground. So, you know, I'm just not going to worry with trying to film that, but that's what I'm going to be doing here just shortly. All right. If you thought tightening the upper and lower control arms would be, you know, just a walk in the park. Well, think again. The service manual says do it while the car is on the ground. So that's where we are. And we've got our socket wrench here with an extension and we're going to go up in there and we're going to grab that uh, bolt on the lower control arm and uh, we'll put a pipe on that wedge that against the concrete and then I'm going to go on the other side with the uh, trusty torque wrench and we're going to run up to 95 foot-pounds I ran the other one up to 90 only because I don't want to you know, it's, it's all about the rotator cuffs at this point in time, if you get, catch my meaning. So, I'm, I, 90s, is that, that's my number, okay? And I'm, uh, I'm sticking to it. All right, I don't have any turkey basting to do, but uh, we do have a little bit of uh, brake fluid archaeology to uh, take care of. So, one would have thought that all of the brake fluid in the front uh, portion of the master cylinder would have leaked out already, but uh, I don't know. Hopefully we won't run into an issue, so I'm gonna use this, and we're going to see what kind of an issue we're gonna be dealing with, if any at all. 
Doesn't look great. Doesn't look tragic, but doesn't look great. We'll get this old brake fluid in a separate container and dispose of it. And uh, we'll cycle some uh, clean brake fluid through the system and uh, bleed our front brakes next. Actually, I'll bleed all of the brakes, not just the front. All right, the front end rebuild, it just keeps on giving. So, you know, that's what's in the bottom of the uh, forward chamber. I'm sure the same exists in the rear one. Uh, you know, if I was uh, resurrecting a junker and just kind of getting it on the road to do a will it run video, which I'm not, um, I'd probably say, ah, just clean that out of there, it'll be all right. But uh, having said all that, I'm contemplating replacing that master cylinder. All right, I'm going to do a little head scratching, and I'll be right back. All right, I made the call. We pulled the old uh, master cylinder off the uh, car here. It's pretty crusty down in there. This particular master cylinder has uh, the two chambers are the same size, rear and, uh, and the front. I was doing some research online, and everything I've seen online has... The 1971 has a smaller rear chamber than the front one. If you look at, say, 68 to 1970 online, the two reservoirs are the same size. Uh, anything 71 and later has a rear reservoir which is smaller. That is, the parts selection online. If you go look at images, uh, like at the GM Heritage Center of a 71 Cadillac, you'll see a brake master cylinder like this one with two handles if you have the same size reservoir on the rear and front you have the two handle setup the brake master cylinder with the smaller rear reservoir has the one handle setup that goes where the handle goes like this don't know why that's important just a difference that i noticed and thought i would pass on i've ordered a remanufactured uh, brake master cylinder from the local uh, parts house I'm not sure which one i'm going to get might be the dual handle with the two reservoirs same size. Might be one with this. I'm going to assume it's probably going to be the one with the smaller in the back and the single handle. We'll see what we get. I'm not saying this one can't be rebuilt, but I am saying I want to get this car back together quickly and back on the road. All right, so the uh, remanufactured uh, unit ought to be in here at the parts house here uh, sometime later today. And uh, we'll take this one in and turn in the core and put our new one all on the car. You can see where this has been leaking out the back. Pretty grody, pretty nasty. And here is the, uh, the rubber seal that went into the uh, brake booster. This was really disgusting. I cleaned it up, but it's not cracked or anything. It seems to be real supple and, and in, in good shape. And here on the, uh, the brake booster, it was pretty nasty as well. Uh, I'm assuming the, uh, the shaft here is seal is okay. If it's not, we'll have to change that out too. <laughs> uh, I'm going to take it one step at a time. I just did a little cleanup down in there to get rid of the rust and the corrosion and whatnot. Um, that brake booster is kind of grody looking, but it works. I'm going to keep using it. If it doesn't, we'll replace it. Simple enough. All right, I'm going to have to say I believe that was the quickest master cylinder replacement I have ever done. It just bolted right up. No worries whatsoever. No broken pressure fittings, no stripped threads. Everything was just easy peasy, the way it ought to be. Now, having jinxed myself by saying all of that, it's time to bleed the brakes. So let's hope that process goes just as well. All right, so I removed the flexible line from the driver's side front of the uh, car. I wanted to show you something. All right, so this line continued to seep brake fluid could not get it to seal. So I decided, well, we gotta take it back off of there and see what's going on. You see the tapered junction down in there, and you see that half moon shaped line beneath the hole. That is the problem. That is the result of a connection which was not uh, symmetrical, if you will. One side of the hard line seated uh, more deeply uh, than the other and thus the the connection was not symmetrical all the way around and thus you had a leak this line is now trash where does that leave us i'll show you so here's the line that i bent up for the job and i bought two more at the parts house uh this morning the one on the left is the line that i bent up the two on the right are brand new from the parts house now can you spot the problem 
This is what I hate about compression fittings. They're either perfect and they don't leak or they leak, period. Now, if you're wondering where, where does my brake fluid go? Well, this is where it goes, folks. This is the kind of stuff you gotta pay attention to. All right, you see the hole on the line on, on the left-hand side? You see how the hole is farther to the left than it is to the right? The hole is not symmetrical within the flare, the flare being the outside part. The hole has to be symmetrical. The hole has to be dead center inside the flare. See the other two? They look great. Actually, the one on the, the far right is the best looking one, so I'll probably use that one. I'll probably bend this one on the right. I'll probably bend that one up and, and use it. This one here is going to go in the trash can. So these are by AGS, and they're manufactured out of Michigan, apparently. The lines look good, but, well... I'm a little disappointed in the one on the left. Go figure, I grabbed the, the one in the rack that had the problem. Anyway, <laughs> just a little heads up on compression fittings. If you've never dealt with them before, this is what you have to deal with. So I've got a new flex line on order. It'll be in tomorrow. And I've got a, uh, a new hard line here. So I'm going to bend one of those up. I bought two just in case. So anyway, and they don't cost a whole lot of money, these hard flex lines don't. So, all right, not a whole lot we can do with this for the rest of the day. So I guess I'll just wait on the flex line and uh, finish up the job. Well, it's cleanup day here in the shop. So time to get the old evapo rust back in its uh, proper place. And seeing how my pump is kaput, we're gonna just do a bottle and a funnel and get this back in there and get the top back on that so it doesn't evaporate because evaporust will evaporate. So I've got that going on. This area over here is just in shambles. There's metal dust everywhere. There's grease, there's you name it. It's just a, it's just a nightmare. So this is where I rebuilt all the control arms for the Cadillac. So this has got to be tidied up. All this stuff put up and get the, uh, this little two foot bench back in its little resting place. If you've ever wondered what in the world is up with this ridiculous two foot square overbuilt bench with four by fours for legs. Well, believe it or not, it was actually meant to be mobile. Back when I made it, back in the early 2000s, I was gonna put some casters on it that I could lower, raise and lower and move it around because I only had a one car garage at the time. That never happened. I just really like this old bench here because it's small, doesn't take up a whole lot of room. You can bang on it. It's just made out of four by fours and plywood. And so that'll get cleaned up and put back in its normal spot. Gotta get all the metal filings off of the drill press and get my uh, spare metal back in the bucket and get the old uh, jack cleaned up, get it stowed away underneath the stairs. Got to pull this rug out of here and de-dust that, get kick, the, kick all the dust out of that. That's just a nightmare. My stairs tend to double as storage, basically. Got to clean this up a little bit. Got to get rid of this green box here with some old classic tools I've got in there. I think I'll just hang those up on the wall. And my heater, he's just resting there, just biding his time. We'll be talking to you in October or probably November, though. We'll see, we'll see what happens. Uh, here's the uh, dust shields for the Cadillac. Those will go right over there. And if you've ever wondered what this was, have you ever seen this thing on the uh, Impala Man's Garage videos? Do you even know what it is? Guess what that is? That's my camera stand. <laughs> Believe it or not, and I just got a makeshift tool shelf right there for setting stuff whenever I'm working on something. So my GoPro sits in this little hole right here on the top, and it works just fine. And you know what? Zero dollars. This place is a nightmare. I tell you what, there, this place is just disgusting. Anything and everything has been pulled out, and it's all just, just, it's just, it's just a big old mess. So, so today is cleanup day and before too long, we'll be back in business. So I've got to fix the uh, brake line issue and correct the leak uh, due to the malformed hard line going into the flex line that caused the leak. So we explained that earlier, but all in all, the front end rebuild on the old Cadillac is done, folks. We are done. All I've got to do is put a new brake line on there, finish bleeding the brakes, and put this thing on the ground and, and drive her off to the alignment shop. But I think I'm gonna save that 
for a separate vlog video, just for, you know, maybe some driving, some alignment, tune from the shop, things like that. So, so this video series was specifically for a front end rebuild on the Cadillac, and that is exactly what we've done. So if you've got any questions about this front end rebuild series, go ahead and put a comment down below. You know I read all the comments, and you know I try to provide answers whenever I can. One other thing we have to do is got to put the dust shields on the inside of the fender wheels, but I'm not going to do that until every single solitary thing is done. That'll probably be the last thing I do. Uh, that's just to pretty it up, but again, we'll put that into a separate video, probably a vlog with maybe a little brake bleeding, some dust shields, driving to and from the uh, alignment shop, so on and so forth. All right, folks, that's all for this front end rebuild series on a 1971 Coupe DeVille. I appreciate you guys stopping by the channel. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you'd like to be notified whenever I release a new video, don't forget to click that little bell down below. You guys have a good one, and remember to enjoy driving in a straight line, your classic Cadillac.